Grace to you and peace, friends. My name is Pastor Mary Benkin, and I serve the good people of Grace and Peace Lutheran Church. I'm here with my husband. I am Nathan Johnson. Welcome to our home. Thank you for joining us for this final gathering of our midweek Lenten service this year. Lent is a season that the church has traditionally devoted to education and spiritual development as we prepare our hearts for Holy Week, which we are observing right now and which culminates this Sunday with Easter. We have been dwelling this year in a series called Grief and Grace, knowing that the pandemic and political upheaval of the past year have created loss and anxiety for most every member of Christ's body here in this place. Throughout this season, we have explored different aspects of the natural human experience of grief, what the Bible tells us about it, and what we should be doing about our grief to live the full lives that God intends for us. The weeks of this series are intended to build upon each other, so if you have just found us here at the end, we really do encourage you to go back to week one and start from the beginning. It will likely be most meaningful that way. We have moved from naming the sources of our grief and telling the stories of loss in weeks one and two to discussing stages of grief and coping strategies in weeks three and four. Last week, week five, we talked once again about the importance of community and more specifically of identifying and using a support system. Support is helpful in all things, but especially as we process the losses of our lives. For our time together this week, the final session of Grief and Grace, we will discuss memory and legacy. We will discuss how sometimes, even after we think we have fully come through our grief journey, there are triggers that can pull us back into turmoil, and we will talk about how to transform our sense of loss into a sense of legacy taking inspiration from the biblical story of the end of Moses' life. But before that, we begin together in song. Our opening hymn for this evening's service is number 532 in the red ELW hymnal, Gather Us In. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. service comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Then Moses went up 
from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab opposite Beth Pei, or but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of God. Thanks word be of to God. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining with us for this series of Grief and Grace. We have arrived at our final midweek worship opportunity. Throughout this Lenten series, we have been exploring the all-too-human topic of grief. Grief is something that we all encounter as we dwell in a world still yearning for salvation, and so it is a state in which we must each learn to live, perhaps even to thrive. Each week, we have offered suggestions for further exploration, ideas that might help you walk your own spiritual journey with a lighter step. But it is important to remember that God leads us on our own individual journeys when it comes to grief. Some things need time for clarity before healing can even begin. Others may heal, heal quickly and cleanly once the event of loss has transpired. If this were a more typical worship opportunity, we might explore the ideas we have encountered these past weeks in person in a small group setting. But due to the necessities of our still distanced time, we decided to put the series out into the internet to be consumed at your own pace instead. No matter where you are in your own grief journey, and hard though it may be to believe, eventually you will learn how to live with your new reality perhaps using some of the ideas that we have mentioned in the previous weeks, or drawing on insights that you have gained elsewhere in your life, you have already begun to experience your grief differently. Through the grace of our God, we humans are resilient creatures, and we have been known to come back from losses that seem insurmountable. Even if, as we discussed in week three, you are able to transcend your grief in a way that is meaningful for you, there may still be more grief work to come down the line. Human beings long for connection, and this does not go away even in the midst of loss. Occasionally, we will see, hear, or experience something that pulls us suddenly back into an earlier stage of grief. We call things that can have this effect on our emotional state triggers, and there will always be triggers that resurrect a sense of longing for what has passed. It's important for us to learn to recognize what these may be and learn how to not let them ruin our day. For example, something like an anniversary, a sight or smell can revive the memory of loss. This can bring back painful memories, but it can also be an opportunity for us to reflect on the goodness associated with that which we are grieving. 
It's an opportunity for God to work through the painful triggers to bring healing instead, which our God of grace works into even the most dire of circumstances for the creation that they love so completely. We just heard the story of Moses' death after leading the people of God to the very edge of the promised land. Moses had been a faithful servant of God for more than 40 years, and God used their servant Moses to guide and teach their people, leading them out of slavery in Egypt and then guiding them through the wilderness while they waited for a sinful generation to pass away, before leading them finally into the homeland that God had promised. Though Moses had been a dutiful leader for many years, he was a part of the sinful generation who left Egypt, and he is not permitted to enter the promised land. Instead, here near the end of the Torah, Moses' death and burial is recorded as taking place just in sight of the new life that he has helped to prepare for God's people. Though he could not accompany his people into the future that still unfolded before them, God showed him what would be possible for those after him because of what he had done, a legacy. Moses is a name that will be spoken by followers of our God for many thousands of years after he is buried here in Deuteronomy. We are talking about him right now in 2021. Israel remembers Moses, and his legacy guides them into their future. In the midst of lost, we have an opportunity to be transformed by the very goodness of the things we are grieving, to allow our lives and those of the people around us to continue to be shaped by those who are no longer with us. We know this is true for Moses, whose death would have been a blow to the community who had followed him through the wilderness for 40 years. Yet with the help of God, after their initial period of mourning, they are able to turn the memory of Moses into a legacy of faithfulness that lasts to this very day. Our own losses are not recorded in the Bible, but they have the same power to transform us as we transform the world that we live in. This happens when, instead of allowing our grief to consume us, we allow ourselves to move through it be changed by it, and come out the other side wiser for the experience. God is with us in our grief to help us come to terms with its companionship on life's road. But as Christians, we make one more important claim about grief. It is not the final word, because death is not the final word. This is Holy Week. When we remember that our God in Christ took the sin and death of the world to the cross and turned it into new life for all people. The events we remember this week, the death and resurrection of Jesus, have left us with a legacy of resurrection and redemption for all, and a promise that one day God will turn all sorrow into joy. May your journey with grief be an unexpected blessing in your own life that shares God's love for years to come. Amen. Amen. We turn now to our prayers of the people. These are prayers of intercession where we ask our God to break into this world, and they are communal prayers. At the end of each petition, one of us will say the words, Lord, in your mercy, to which we encourage you to respond wherever you are and whenever you are watching this video, hear our prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God, our Creator, you have walked with your creation from the beginning of time and are with us still. Help us to feel your presence in the midst of the trials of this world. Bind up your brokenhearted people for the work of your kingdom. Make your church an instrument of healing in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Christ, our guide, Lead us by your example to love as you have loved, and live as you have lived. Give us humble hearts in service to our neighbor. Be with us in our grief and give comfort when we mourn. Help us through the trials of this world till we see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Spirit, our friend, blow the winds of your holy change through our lives and bless us with the warmth of your presence. Encourage the church throughout the world to dedicate their worship to your will, giving us the unity of heart that comes only from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending hymn for today's service is number 808 in the Red ELW hymnal. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song. And we will sing all four verses. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you wherever I go. You alone are life and our peace and our song. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song. throughout Lent, we have been offering suggestions for how you might continue your own grief work at your own pace, resources you might look into, and short exercises to help you consciously build understanding of what you are experiencing and how to work toward healing. These suggestions are only that, suggestions. If they are not something that you find helpful, that's okay. And as always, if these brief suggestions are helpful for you, they may be spirit, uh, powerful aids in your spiritual and emotional journey through grief. But please feel free to adapt them however you need. As we have mentioned many times before now, it is often incredibly beneficial to approach some of this grief work with the help of a supportive small group. Even though this is our last, last session, if you would like to be connected to a small group of people who may be walking a similar journey to discuss any of the topics that we have covered in this series, please reach out to us. We would be happy to connect you whether you live in the Peoria, Illinois area or are joining us from afar. Last week, we invited you to make a list of the people in your support system, and if you felt comfortable, a list of people who you might be able to add to your support system. For our concluding opportunity this week, 
we invite you to think of ways that you can make a legacy out of your loss. This can take any form that is meaningful for you. It might be a ceremony or a ritual that you observe from time to time, a keepsake that you create, or a practice that you take with you. Understanding the legacies of our loss takes time and patience, so it may not be immediately apparent what an appropriate act may be. After time, you may feel like trying something else. This is all a natural part of the process. We trust that God walks with you in this journey, and we pray that you find comfort in their presence. Thank you so much for walking with us on this Lenten journey of grief and grace. We are very fortunate to take on this work in holy community with you. May your holy week be blessed and your Easter full of alleluias. Receive now this benediction. May God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God.